on one more time. Help me celebrate this family. Amen. If you don't mind, amen, I'm going to the word of the Lord. I don't want, I don't want y'all to have no excuses. Amen. It's like Pastor Kemp is in church late, so I can't go with him today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're going to the word of the Lord. If, if you would be kind enough to go with me to. Amen. Um, Genesis. Very familiar passage of scripture, Genesis 12. Um, put me in A flat just real quick. Thank you, nephew. Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis 12. Old song of the church. Go like this. When I come into his presence, I humble myself. Lift up both my hands and I begin to worship. Praise team, our worship. Sorry, I'm reading from another version, but follow it there. I will give you many descendants, and they will become a great nation. I will bless you and make your name famous so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, but I will curse those who curse you. And through you, I will bless all nations. Great God, we love you, we appreciate you, we adore you, we ask that you would be with us, speak through us, allow your anointing to flow now, I decrease that you might increase, 
I sit down that you may stand up. I ask you, O oh God, to let your glory fill this room. Let your word go from the pulpit to the door. Cause it to arrest every hearer that their lives may be changed. Convict them where conviction is needed. Change them where change is needed. And when all is said and done, you will be glorified. And an enemy will be terrified because someone came into the house of the Lord today and you shifted their lives. So for that, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said amen. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Very familiar passage of scripture. It simply says that in that first verse, now the Lord has said to Abram, get out of the country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Haven't showed it to you yet, but I need you to do a few things before I show you. I, I want to talk to you from a thought entitled a journey called I don't know a journey called I don't know amen so what I, what I realize is that this journey called life is is not simple as a matter of fact I would surmise that it's far from simple we, we often assume unfortunately that uh, that that salvation and redemption um, equates to simple living. We believe that when we uh, confess Jesus as our Lord, everything is going to change overnight. I'm going to go from being a, a, a uh, borrower to a lender. I'm going to go from being to, from the back in the front. But the truth of the matter is, I, and I love, I'm glad that I'm saved. Anybody else glad that you're saved? I'm glad that I'm saved. But salvation is m nothing merely but the forgiveness of sins and reconciliation with God. It is the recognition, the recognition of grace that brings us back into alignment with purpose and destiny. But through salvation, God never promises that the road is going to be easy. It does not mean life becomes easy. And if I could be honest today and transparent, and I hope somebody's not making here to make a decision towards salvation, I, I would still suggest to you that you do it. But if I were to be honest, the statuses on our social media platform should all recomplicate it. I just believe that when you are saved, God, I believe we all need to change our status to say complicated because we thought that it was going to be one way but it turned out to be another way we thought that when we came down this aisle and confessed Jesus as our Lord and as our Savior all of a sudden money was going to fill my pocketbook my life is complicated my God I thought friends were going to be there for me I thought that I was going to have so many friends everybody was going to love me because I'm saved I just thought because I was a believer that life was going to be simple I thought my family was going to come back together just because I got saved but the truth of the matter is when I confess my life got complicated it's complicated because essentially it is it's a recognition that life if you will isn't always straightforward uh, with God it's just not straightforward it's filled with twists it's filled with turns and unexpected challenges and if I could survey this room right now I'm sure that many of us would have the testimony that as I soon as I finish one thing, another thing, another thing happened. Tap your neighbor and say, complicated. My, my life, I know I look good. I know I dress up well. I know I can pray with my shout is pretty. I got it. I know how to lift my hands. I know how to pray. I know how to seek the face of God. But my life is complicated. It's complicated. And, and it would suggest this, that 
Just when you believe that you have resolved and completed one life issue, a new one arising. So what happens in salvation or as believers, it is a constant cycle of challenges. It's a, it's a constant challenge. Every Listen, I, I'm standing before you on a platform, but I have some challenges. I don't want you to think that I'm without challenges. I have some challenges because life is complex. And I don't believe that it, God ever intended for life to be easy. But he did promise us now. Huh? He didn't say it was going to be easy, but he did say, come unto me. <laughs> All you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle, I am humble in heart, and you will find rest in your soul. David knew life was complicated and David said the righteous person has many problems, many troubles, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. So I don't care how complicated it may be. Somebody say the Lord delivers. Woo! The Lord set free. If it had not been for, I feel the preacher, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have lost my life in my last cycle. I would have lost my life in my last challenge but I'm standing here today as a testimony that God delivers us from all adversity somebody shout hallelujah he doesn't promise a life full of challenges but ultimately God is the source of deliverance he's the source of of protection he, he yes lord he said we can run into him and we find a hiding place when we are in trouble is there anybody in trouble god you don't have to raise your hand but is there anybody right now to say man this complicated place that i'm in right now i just don't know God my God I don't know how it's going to turn out I don't know how it's going to be I'm on this journey called I don't know my life is complicated I'm saved first lady but it's complicated I love Jesus but it's complicated oh my God if Jesus was here he would echo the same sentiment and he would say this when I was in the garden of Gethsemane my life was complicated God wanted me to do something God God help me and I'm a hundred percent God I'm a hundred percent man but I found myself in this garden in this place in this complicated moment and I said God if it be your will take this bitter cup from me oh God but not my will but thine will be done I don't know who I came to preach to but God says if your life is complicated you should shout right there that's just an interview Indication that my will is being performed. Hey, yes, Lord. I said if your life is complicated, it just simply means that purpose is on the move. If your life is complicated and it seems like the top is about to blow off and the bottom is about to fall out, it's an indication that there's an anointing on your life and you're not allowed to die. Hey, oh my Shia, God, you're not allowed to die. Yes, Lord, God, I got to get out of here, but I feel like preaching. Tap your neighbor and say, you got to live. You got to finish this journey. You got to live. Somebody needs your testimony. If the songwriter was here, he'll say, live, live, live. You got to live to see it happen. You got to live to see the conclusion. You got to live to see what God is about to do. You got to live you're not allowed to die until you finish your assignment you gotta live hallelujah I just want to teach my Sunday that was... so in most instances life leads us on this journey wherein God watch this does not provide all the details and we, people of faith, we need details. 
It's not enough for the prophet to tell you, oh my God, that you're going to get a promotion. You want details. It's not enough for, my God, the prophet to tell you that you're going to be healed. You want details detail. Faith is the substance uh, of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. We need details but can you believe God when you can't trace God? I don't know how you're going to do it. As a matter of fact I wish I could pass this mic. Most of y'all will be like I don't know. I don't know how God is going to do it. I don't know how God is going to fix it. I don't know how God is going to turn it around. I don't know how God is going to rescue me I'm on a journey court I don't know this is where (laughs) we have a hard time minister Mo navigating situations y'all please sit down yes Lord because now my emotions are connected to this my emotions are connected with my challenges. My psychological, psychologically, I'm, 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 I'm committed to this, but I'm, I'm just not there. My God, it's this, it's this place where I'm connected to a place called unknown. Where do I go when I don't have clear answers and understanding? Yes, Lord. Who do I rely on? When I don't have the details to move forward, somebody say, preach God. I feel him in here. I feel God in here. This is where, this is where we become broken because we don't have a clear understanding of how God is going to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's where many of us are here today. I don't care whether you're sitting on the front row or the back row. You're all in a place called complicated because you just don't know my God I don't know how I'm going to pay these bills I just lay it before me and pray this I don't know I don't know where this child is and how God is going to fit I just don't know my marriage is upside down one day is up next day is down my job is all crazy I don't know if I'm going to lose it or I'm going to keep it I just don't know just don't know A simple question, Minister Ray, like how are you doing? If people would be honest, most people would be like, I don't know. But because the church has has conditioned you to say, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. Oh my God, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. I, I have the narrative, but the truth, if I would just answer you truly, I would just say, I don't know. God's nah. questions as simple as this, Elder Angie, where are you going? Most people would say, ah, don't if you would just be honest with your boy. God, if I were to ask you what's the vision for your life or what's the vision for your family, many would just say, ah, don't know. Something as simple as are you going to church with Pastor at 3:30? Some people would just be like, I don't know. I just don't know. Now watch this. Can I go a step deeper? Let me cut deep. If I were to ask you today, where is God taking you? Yeah. I'm not talking about where you're going to eat after church. Where is God taking you in life? Many people would be like, I don't know. I get up every morning and my routine is the same. I don't know. I just get up and hope something is going to happen. God, I I don't know where God is taking me. I come to church. I pay my tithes. God, I just don't know. Is there anybody in here besides your boy that's on this journey called I don't know? I'm trying to navigate through life, but I just don't. So now we at war with what we don't know. But I, I, yes, Lord, I don't know about you, but I just ask God today, God, give me details. And God spoke to me, and he says, Talbot, this is a season of blind moves. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, blind moves. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord, this that not mine. Turn to your neighbor and say, if you're going to do it, you got to do it in the blind. I said, if you're going to do it for real, you're going to have to do it blind. Because the truth of the matter is you shut up and you shake your neighbor's head. A blind moves. I don't know how you do it, but I'm moving in the blind. Oh, I'm just trusting you where I can't trace you. I'm moving in the blind. Oh, I may bump into some walls. I may run into some people, but I'm not going to stop. I'm going to move blind. Say, yeah. Season of blind moves. I feel the anointing right there. Somebody say, do it blind. direction and we have to move without understanding how it's going to get done yes Lord I'm giving you an assignment yes Lord and you have to move without knowing how you're going to get there God help me yes Lord you're going somewhere and you're waiting for details and God says I need you to move when you just don't know and that's uncomfortable Yes, Lord. I feel the anointing of God. Hallelujah. God said this is the season of permissions and direction. Yes, Lord. Not only am I going to give you permission to move, but I'm going to give you direction. But God, watch this. He's going to do something crazy like tell you to go someplace, but not going to tell you what's going to happen when you get there. He's not going to tell you where you're going. God. All he's going to tell you is to move. And you got to move without an understanding. You, do you know how hard that is when you can't turn on your navigation system and you know you're supposed to be at a destination, but you don't know how to get there? God, God said that's how it is in the spirit God says in our car we can put on our navigation tell the navigation the address where we want to go and it tells you every turn it tells you the shortcut but God says not in the spirit in the spirit you're going to have to move without a navigation system and that's uncomfortable it's uncomfortable to move Dave when you don't know where you're going and can I bless the church? Some of us are afraid to move because the last time you move, you failed. So some of us, will re we would rather remain stagnant than to move in fear of failure. I, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm trying my best. Yes, Lord. I said, God, I'm going to trust you to make it right. I'm going to trust you to make it right. I'm going to move, but you're going to have to make it right. God. Yes, Lord. You're going to have to, if my Spike Leaf voice, do the right thing. God, Yeah, God, I don't know how you're going to have to do the right thing. Because if I move and if I move in the blind, don't send me. Don't send me someplace, God, and cause it to look like the last place where I fell. I'm going to trust you with my whole heart. I'm going to move when I just don't know. And that's where we find, I'm on my way to my text, that's where we find Abram in the text. The Bible says that God tells him, Abram, get up from your country, leave your family, leave your friends, leave the place where you become comfortable, leave the place where you become familiar. 
My, my, my. Oh, boy. I got to be careful because, hallelujah, if this doesn't belong to you, don't hold it. Let it go. But God just said to me, I heard him clearly, that some of us are in jobs because you're afraid to apply for one that you don't qualify for. And God, yes, Lord. And you're miserable. Oh, my, my. You don't see a way out of it. God says this is the season to submit your resume blindly. I feel the anointing. I said submit your resume even when you don't feel like you oh God are qualified for the position. God says I just need you. Somebody say to move. Find Abram. Find Abram. I, I speak to your fear. I got to get out of here. I speak to your doubt. And I said, I, I pastor, I know I hear you. What harm would it do to apply for it? We want God to move, but we don't want to clean up our resume. I got to I gotta move. Hallelujah. We just sitting there crying and complaining and murmuring and you won't even clean up your resume, God. You won't even go on LinkedIn and be like, God, I'm gonna apply for this. All they can do is say no, God. Yes, Lord. But if I don't do nothing, I'm gonna be here miserable. I don't know who I'm preaching to. God, help me. But God, I promise you, Life Church, God says I'm taking you somewhere. Ah, uh, Yes, Lord. And God says it's an acceleration. Oh, my God. I, hey, hey, I just need you to move. Can you stand up real quick? Take one step and signify I'm on the move. Y'all sit back down. Hallelujah. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, y'all just made the devil mad because the devil was okay with you sitting there and crying and complaining but the moment you said you was going to make a move now hell is trembling because you got out of your own way I don't know who I came to preach to but that move signified that you're going somewhere say ah. he said y'all I'm trying to get out of here the anointing. I said I feel the power of God. He says, Abram, get away from your family. Get away from your friends. Get away from comfortability. And this is where it messed me up, Minister Janice. He says, go to a place that I will show you. So if someone were to ask Abram where you going, he'd be like, I don't know. He told me to go to a place that he will show me. I haven't showed you. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Y'all, I feel the enough. He said, I haven't showed you. And yet, Pastor Ellen, all I need you to do is go. <laughs> Y'all, I feel the anointing in here. God says, God says, listen, this message is for you. Go to a place that I will show you. Which means that you have to move, Anthony, when you just don't know. The Bible says, and then he turns around and says, if you do this. Oh, man, I, I'm about to go crazy. <laughs> he said, if, if, if you just do what I tell you to do. I, I may not give y'all no points, but I feel a praise in my feet. He says, if, if you do what I tell you to do, he says, I will make you a great nation. Yeah, he says, he says, I will bless you and then I will make your name great. <laughs> Yes, you better preach and you shall be a blessing. So he says, go to a country, leave your family, leave your friends, go to a place that I will show you. I haven't showed it to you yet, but if you go, tap your neighbor and say, if you go, 
I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will make you a great nation. I will bless them that bless you. I will curse them. Every hater, every jealous demon. Yes, Lord. I bless them that bless you, Mom Demi. And I'm going to curse them that curse you. All you got to do is somebody say, move. And then he says this. I got to go. And then he says this. Leave your family, leave your friends, leave your relatives. Go to a place that I what? Will show you. If you go, I'm going to bless them that bless you. I'm going to curse them that curse you. I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to make you a great nation. And then he says this, and in you, your family shall be blessed. <laughs> yeah. can, I, can I preach to the church? Inside of you, you hold the key to your family's future. Yep, if you stay where you are, you can watch this. Your family going to be, oh man, I got to be careful. Your family will remain where they are. But in you, God says, I put the key to advance not just you, but your family. Sit, 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 sit. I'm going to give you three points and I'm out of here. So he says this first lady, he says in verse number, in verse number one, he says, uh, 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 now the Lord said to Abram, can I pause right there, Trina, because that blessed me. Because I started to think about it, first lady. He was talking to Abram directly. What if Abram was not positioned to hear? Because there are many times when God's speaking, but we're so far out of alignment that we don't hear. Here's my first point. My first point says, you, listen, if, if on this journey called I don't know, you have, be, you have to be positioned to hear. Somebody say, God put me in, back in position. This is the beginning of. This is right here. It's the beginning of navigating life when we don't understand. The first thing we must do, we must be open to hear God. Now, here's the thing that you're not going to like. You have to be open even if he says what you don't want to hear. You, do you know how hard it is, Elder Shamika, for him to say, watch this, his father just died. In, in the latter chapter, in chapter 11, father just died. Now you're going to tell me to leave the rest of my family? And anybody know the story? He didn't always follow the instructions. And because he didn't follow the instructions, it was a mess. But the first thing I must say, you got to hear God. We're trying to navigate through life on our own without an ear to God's voice. Hallelujah. God help me. So, 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 how do I hear from him? I'm going to help you. L listen, many people are looking for an audible message from God. Can I tell you that this is an open book test? Anybody been in school and you had to take an open book test? Meaning that you can open a book to take the test. God help me. I said open a book to take the test. I said all you got to do is open a book to take the test. Let me say it one more time for the people in the back. All you got to do is open a book when you in a tent. The book will say something like this. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that would rise against you in judgment, God says he will condemn. If you open a book, it'll tell you, the Lord is my light and my salvation. God, whom shall I feel? The Lord is what? The strength of my life. If you open a book, it'll tell you to wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Tap your neighbor and say, open the book. I'm just waiting for God to speak to me. I'm just waiting for God to say something. God has spoken. He gave you 66 books to find yourself. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we're waiting for this profound word. 
when the word simply could be, I am your shepherd. And you shall not want for anything. You can also find yourself, you will find God to hear God in meditation. Social media has crippled the church. Because the time we should be meditating, I got to get out of here. Yes, Lord. What if, what if you shut off everything, show some media to TV, and sit down and say, God, I'm going to sit in this chair until you speak to me. I'm going to meditate, I'm going to close my eyes, and I'm not going to move until you say something to me. Hey, I rebuke your busyness, God. I said, I said, I rebuke your busyness. You're so busy that you don't have time to hear from God. Wake up scrolling. Go to sleep scrolling. Wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and scroll. All because you are addicted to this social life and because of it, you've missed God. I just had this vision. God just showed me this vision of all these words that's caught up in the heavens. Hallelujah. God just saw this vivid just a second ago. Elder Jamie, I saw this vivid vision of all these words that's in heaven and can't drop, can't fall because you're too busy. God, forgive us. For being too busy to hear you. Forgive us. He says, number one, be positioned to hear. Here's the next one. He tells him, get out of your country. Get away from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. So not only do you must you be positioned to hear, you must obey the instructions. No matter what they say. Oh, somebody not going to like this. Start the car, Ray. Hallelujah. They're not going to like this. Because God will say something to us like this. I'm going to bless you, but you need to leave the circle you're in. Oh, I just feel it. Yes, Lord. Oh, no, not them. They've been my friends since high school. I've been with them since high school, not knowing that behind your back, God, there's a knife, God. I feel it. Yes, Lord. They'll stab you every chance they get, but you're afraid to leave. Somebody say, obey the instructions. Sometimes. Minister Demetrius' instructions are so clear, but we don't want to listen to them because, because we have already made up in our minds how God is going to do it. Get out of the way. I feel the Holy Ghost. Get out of your way. I'm trying, Erica, I feel like running around. I said, get out of your own way. Yes, Lord. Not only get out of your way, here's my prayer. I feel the anointing of God, baby. Here's my prayer. God, we missed the instructions the first time. Would you mind sending them to us one more time? God, <laughs> send them one more time. I promise when you send it, I'm going to do it. I just need you to send Send it one more time. Send the instructions one more time. One day, one day, Jordan and I, you know, whenever I'm putting together something at the house, I call Jordan. And when he came to the house, the instructions was in Chinese. Yeah, in Chinese. So what we had to do was try to put it together without instructions. We did. We and, and it looked good. It looked like it was stable. It looked like everything was going to stay. Hallelujah. But then screws start coming out of everything. Hallelujah. Because I don't know if we forgot washers. I don't know. But we should not have had a whole bag of screws when we were done. All I know was we did not have the instructions. And whenever you don't have the instructions, you become dysfunctional. Oh boy, I gotta get, yep, I'm preaching to a dysfunctional people because you don't have the instructions and you're trying to move and navigate and you still got a bag full of screws. (laughs) 
Somebody say, obey the instructions. The Bible says, get up, get from where you are. And he says, go to a far country, to a place where I'm going to tell you. Here's my last point. I'm out of here. One, you must be positioned to hear. Number two, you must obey the instructions. Woo. Oh, my God. God just dropped this in my spirit. I got to say this. He says, he says that, oh, my, follow the instructions. Uh, uh, and I command you to go forward with closed eyes. Closed eyes. Man, I wish I had time to unpack that. So now, listen, uh, 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 be positioned to hear. Obey the instruction. Here's the last thing. He says, I will bless those that bless you. I'm in verse number three. And I will curse them who curse you. And in all the families of the earth shall be blessed because of you. Mm -hmm. If I were to piggyback off of that, I will piggyback and take Psalm 145, 13. It declares the Lord is trustworthy in all of his promises and faithful in all that he does. That, that's what I would say to you. So not only must you be positioned to hear, not only must you obey the instructions, but here's the last part. You got to trust his promises. Has the Lord promised you anything? <laughs> No, I'm not talking about this week or the past week. Do any of you all got some promises that have not been fulfilled yet? Well, here's the problem with that, Candy. Whenever God makes a promise, because he's not an Indian giver, he can't take it back. Which means that if God promised you anything, I don't care if you were three years old, four years old, five years old, six years old. God says, I'm not an Indian giver. If I told you, you can have it. Oh, let me tell you what Isaiah says. Oh, my God, no. Let me go to Moses. Moses says, I'm not a man that I should lie. Neither am I the son of man that I must repent. If I said it, you got to believe it. Here's my last point. You got to trust God promises. Can I? I get out of here now. I understand where we are as a people. We are a people that need details. But God sent me here on this Sunday morning to let you know that you may not have the details. But I'm asking you to move when you just don't know. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not entered into your heart. The things that I have prepared for you. Those that trust me. Those that want me. Those that believe me. Is there anybody in here? Can I prophesy that God said don't leave your promises unguarded. Every promise that God made to you. I dare you to start praying over those promises and say God it hasn't come yet but I'm crazy enough to shout now and wait for it later. Is there anybody in here that says God I need you God I trust you and I need you to fulfill your promise Paul says it like this do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving with prayer and petition and with thanksgiving I said with prayer and with petition and with thanksgiving Thanksgiving, I said with prayer, and yes, Lord, and with thanksgiving, which simply means this, you don't have to wait till the battle's over, you can shout right now, thank them right now, praise them right now, salute them right now, God's gonna do it, all he needs is a submitted vessel, all God needs is for us to realign, Realign with his voice. Yes, Lord. I gotta go, y'all. But may the Lord bless you in the palm of his hand. Because he told me that I'm gonna bless this church when you move. When you just don't know. Shake that neighbor's hand like you're gonna shake it all. Say, neighbor, God says to move when you just don't know. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not beneath his wing. Love abide, God will take care of you. Say, 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 say. Hey, I feel the power of God. I feel blessings. Big release. 
open up the windows of heaven. Pour us out a blessing. Open up the window. Yes, Lord. Pour us out a blessing. If you clap, you open it. If you shabak up, you open it. Open it up right here. Praise the right. your season of moving blind. I said, this is your season of moving the blind. And God says, I'm going to honor your move. I just don't need you to sit there. I need you to move. lifted. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Begin to petition God. Not for your neighbor. This is between you and God. Come on. You got 30 seconds. Come on. Pull on heaven. Be honest with God. God, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know where you're taking me. I don't know how you're going to fix it. I don't know how you're going to turn around. But I trust you. That's right, come on. I'm not going to tell you what to say. From the pulpit to the door, pull on heaven.
You're going to bless them that bless us. You're going to curse them that curse us. You're going to make our name great. Make our names great on our jobs. Make our names great in our community. Make our names great in our own house. Make our name great. And we'll give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Can you clap your hands and begin to celebrate them? Come on. Come on, celebrate them. Come on. Oh, boy. church to be the place you call home meet us right here come on there are leaders if you would only you got 30 seconds come on we're making a decision can you evangelize on your own ask are you saved do you have a church home we don't want you to leave here we don't want you to leave here oh my trust come on here's one come on trust trust me if you come on is there another come on if you Come on. Come on, here's some more. Trust me, come on, leaders. I need leaders. Oh my God. Come on, if you would all. Come on, trust. Come on, the doors of our church is open. Come on, come by the fire is hot. Trust. take this long, but you got 30 more seconds to come. I don't know why the Lord is posturing me. Come on, we are in a we're in a holding pattern. We're waiting on someone. Come on. Deaconess Lisa, are you somewhere around? Trust me. clap your hands for these that have come. The Life Church would like to welcome Miss Janelle. Miss Janelle. Y'all, we like to welcome Elder Denzel. And Pat and Miss Pat and Henry to the Light Church. Come on, say welcome home, y'all. Come on, one more time. Welcome home, y'all. Don't y'all do that because we, we got somewhere to go. <laughs> Listen. Y'all, so if you
take it to him. The Lord just said to me right then and there, he said, I'm putting life in this building. Many, many of you thought you were living, but you weren't living. He said, today I'm going to cause you to live again. Tap your neighbor and say, you got responsibility to live. Live, 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 live. You can live again. You are you are authorized to live. Oh, you are authorized.
He's going to fix it up. He's going to correct it. All I need to do is close your eyes and move. Thank God. Oh, God. Hey, 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 hey. Yo, I feel the power of God. I, I feel the power.
because we should not take this unworthily. So if you know you have sinned before you, can you just pray here? Come on, ask God for forgiveness. Father, we repent of our sins. If there's anything that we've said, anything that we've done, anything that we've thought that was not pleasing unto you, before we take up your body and take up your blood, we ask for your forgiveness now. We repent of our sins. We are sorry never to go back to that place again. In Jesus' name, amen. The wafer which represents the body of Jesus that was broken for you and I every time they nailed Jesus to the cross, every time they pierced his flesh and broke his bones. This is what I love about the text, LJ. The Bible says that he had power to come down. But every time he thought about coming down, he thought about each of you. So he said his body was broken so that you don't have to be broken. So we take this wafer and we break it, which represents the body of Jesus that's broken for you and I. We take it and we eat together. For it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. It was the blood that gives us strength. In this cup represents every mistake you've made, every sin you committed. Oh, God. Somebody say, thank God for the blood. The Bible says if it had not been for the blood, there would be no remissions of sin. You would not have had a platform to say, I'm sorry. But every time his blood shed, whoa, my God, it was a cleansing agent for our sins. He said, as often as we do this, we take it and we drink it together. Come on, you may drink. You have renewed your covenant. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. While we're still standing, thank you, visitors. Amen to the family that came, amen, for the christening. We thank y'all, amen. And you know what? Thank y'all for staying. Thank y'all for staying. To all of our visitors, our first-time visitors, we celebrate you, and we thank you so much for stopping by to see us. And those who can, amen, go get you a piece of chicken, amen, and meet us over at Friendship. Amen. I pray that I'll see your faces there. Amen. Am I forgetting anything for sleep? Remember, no Bible study. And then new members. Amen. Please see Deaconess Lisa. She's right over here on this wall. Raise your hand high, Deaconess, so they can see you. Jump up and down if you would. Amen. Hallelujah, so they can see you. Amen. The doors of the church are still open, so if there's still one, amen, you have a moment. Amen. Come on, let us pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you. Give you peace both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said amen. Tell somebody I love you for real.